Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is Dr. Minarsik, and I will be dictating approximately 500 pathology lectures. And uh, I figure it's probably about 500 because there's uh, 29 chapters in Robbins. Each one takes about three hours on the average. And uh, YouTube will limit me to 10 minutes, so I'll probably spend about Oh, four or five uh, sections per lecture. If you multiply that out by the whole 1400 page book, I think we're going to do about uh, 500 10 minute lectures. We're going to start out uh, like the book does with chapter one, the first 10 chapters being the general pathology and the uh, last 19 chapters being systemic pathology. I've done this several times already and it's starting to uh, bore me and uh, be very repetitive and I know you students never come to class so I thought I would also put it on YouTube uh, in PowerPoint format so you could just uh, look at it at uh, 3 in the morning with the can of beer maybe in bed with your girlfriend or boyfriend rather than put on your clothes and come to class so let's start out with uh, pathology. The first chapter is called Cell Adaptations, Cell Injury, Cell Death. Each chapter has about 50 pages and uh, each chapter will have about a hundred PowerPoints and I could probably do maybe 10, 20, 30 PowerPoints at a crack. Let's see how this goes. Whether I do all 500 or whether I give up will depend on uh, your comments uh, from YouTube. Uh, let's move on. And every time you see a PowerPoint that has a yellow fluorescent highlighting, these are the most important points and concepts. Uh, and here are the next three uh, slides will show you the main objectives for the uh, chapter. And I want to emphasize that uh, I don't want to just be here to help you pass your boards. You know what? Passing the boards and learning pathology are two completely different things. I am here to teach you pathology. I don't give a damn about the boards. I have nothing but contempt for the boards. And I guess I'm allowed to say it because I have my own school here now on YouTube. But let's talk about the objectives of the first chapter. We're going to talk about the three anatomic uh, types of diseases classically. Now, there's always some exceptions, but all diseases are either degenerations inflammations or neoplasms. We're going to talk about the plasia and the trophy brothers too. Hypo, hyper, blah, 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 meta. We're going to talk about the uh, different factors of cell injury and death, which ones are uh, reversible, which ones are not reversible, and we're going to skip a lot of the crazy chemistry and go into the real conceptual meat of the thing. We're going to talk about the pathologic mechanisms at the subcellular level regarding uh, mitochondria, uh, calcium, free radicals, cell membranes, ATP. We're going to talk about the difference uh, between the concept of apoptosis and necrosis. We're going to talk about uh, subcellular responses to injury uh, with the various uh, organelles. Last but not least, we're going to talk about intracellular accumulations of all types, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, pigments, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, we're going to make a little philosophical concept of why cells uh, die or get injured and why people get uh, injured or die. So here's an easy thing to remember. Pathology is the study of disease. Pathos meaning suffering from Greek and logos meaning study. There are two kinds of pathology classically. One is general pathology, disease processes. Pretty much talking about the three things we talked about, degeneration, inflammation, neoplasia, but also systemic pathology. Most of your curricula now are being divided into systems rather than disciplines. And uh, I always kind of remember that there are 10 systems in the body, you know, respiratory, renal, blah, blah, blah. And the last 19 out of 29 chapters of Robbins are devoted to systemic path, while the first 10 are devoted to general path. Um, Let's talk about 
the four things that are present for every disease. If you don't have these four things, you don't have a disease. You may have a syndrome or an observation or this or that. But in order for something to be a bona fide disease, it has to have four things. First of all, it has to have a cause or what we call etiology. Sometimes we don't exactly know the precise etiology if there is such a thing. So we talk about risk factors instead. Every disease has to have a pathogenesis. And this is the hardest of the four concepts to understand. Pathogenesis is defined as the insidious development of changes at the cellular and subcellular level which uh, occur before the actual clinical expression of the disease. And of course the clinical expression is here number four. We all know what that is. Those are signs and symptoms. In addition, the fourth thing which every thing disease needs to be a true disease is a morphology. It has to be have an abnormal anatomy. Usually that's at the cellular level, but it could be radiologic, it could be biochemical. So go out and get your tattoos, folks, because when you study pathology, you're going to have to know uh, on your four tattoos, it has to have an etiology, a pathogenesis, a morphology, and a clinical expression. And etiology could be the actual cause, if there is such a thing. Or sometimes when we think we know the cause, we go back in time and we find out that it's not as easy as we thought. Sometimes, mathematically speaking, we just like to mention risk factors, which are not precise causes, but they're related to the cause. For example, the four major risk factors of atherosclerosis versus a precise cause. Uh, pathogenesis is the sequence of events from the initial stimulus of whatever causes the disease to the ultimate expression of the disease. So the stimulus occurs, changes occur within your body, and then ultimately you have a clinical expression. Well that time lag between the so-called cause and the expression and the sequence of things that are happening on the cellular level is called the pathogenesis. Every disease has to have a morphology and I would not want any of you ever to write a prescription without being able to recognize that morphology. Unfortunately, this is the part of pathology that has suffered throughout the years and people are very good at rattling off acronyms but they fail to understand what's happening. Uh, and the type of morphology most pathologists are fond of are microscopic abnormal anatomy. Uh, gross pictures are really nice too. The radiologists love radiologic morphology and of course this is all reflected as a uh, ultimately as an abnormal anatomy of molecules isn't it? So you could think of uh, morphology on any level. Uh, in most cases and I hope you will agree with this. If not, I'll eventually convince you is that when you think of a disease, you have to think of an abnormal arrangement of cells. And that is what we see under the microscope. And sure, it could be molecular. Sure, it could be radiologic. But every time we talk about a disease, even though it has four classical factors, I want you to remember that ultimately there's going to be an abnormal morphology. So you know what? Because we're approaching the 10 minute uh, zone right now, let's quit this and we'll uh, pick up on uh, slide number 12 out of 65 on the next movie. Bye bye.